Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the Compton T-Flats. T-Flats are one of the most notorious Mexican gangs in Compton, having a history starting over 40 years ago. The T-Flats, like most Hispanic gangs in Southern California, are Serranos. Even though they are Serranos, they beef with other Southsiders like Vario Alondra, Largo 36, and Vario 70, and a few more. T-Flats also beef with several black gangs. Some of the hoods include several Pyrus like M Street Pyru, Fruit Town Pyru, and Treetop Pyru. T-Flats got a lot of attention in the early 90s when a segment about them was dropped involving three young kids who were from T-Flats. The segment was about their life with the T-Flats and what they had to go through being from the hood. They also talked about fights, jail, even shootouts at an early age. One of the T-Flats members was only 12 years old and had been shot over seven times. This was just a tell of how bad the streets were and what it leads to. Out of the three boys who were shown in the segment, one lost his life in the early 2000s and his early 20s, and the other two are in prison for life. I just let you know ain't too many routes in the streets. Most lose their lives or go to jail. With that being said, let's get into some cases. August 4th, 2007. Andrew and his cousins Gabriel and Ronnie were hanging out on 7th and Lynch Street in Bloomington. A man walked up wearing a hoodie and a bandana over his face. He asked Andrew where was he from. Andrew said Compton T Flats. The dude then did T Flats and pulled out a strap and started firing, shooting Andrew multiple times, taking his life. The shooter dropped his bandana two miles down the road. This all led back to his DNA and also his arrest. The shooter's name was Slim. He was from Westside Bloomers. When Slim was picked up, he didn't have no alibi at all. He told the police he didn't even remember where he was on the day of the shooting, but he could have been with families, what he said. Police then put him in a cell with an informant. He admitted to doing the shooting, even saying the driver was a dude named Smokes. He even told the informant he got rid of the strap and he had his girlfriend get rid of the car. This was all the evidence the police needed. Slim was sentenced to 75 years to life. On September 1st, 2007, around 11.30 at night, several teenagers including John, Miguel, Fernando, Manuel, and Hernan were at a party on Depot Street in Southgate. After the party was shut down, all the teenagers just decided to chill on the street. Two brothers pulled out while they was on the street named John and Jose. They yelled out T-Flats to the crowd of teenagers. Jonathan got out the car and socked John in the face. John began to fight back until Jonathan pulled out the knife. But then began stabbing John. Jose then got out the car and then began fighting Fernando. Jose yelled out to his brother Jonathan, get the strap. They must ain't have no hands cause they went straight to weapons. They were outnumbered though, so they wanted to blast. Jonathan began running to the car to get the strap. Manuel then tried to stop him from getting it and put him in a chokehold. Jonathan broke loose and started slicing and dicing Manuel like he was a damn Wolverine. No, Jonathan and Jose started to fight. They jumped in the car and sped off like some little hoes. Jonathan stabbed multiple people, but Manuel was the only one to lose his life. And Jonathan both fled to Mexico, where they were detained in December of 2007. They both said it was self-defense and they were only protecting themselves. This was later proven false and Jose was sentenced to 36 years to life and Jonathan received 81 years to life. On November 25th, 2008, several African-American teenagers were walking to a foster home they lived in. The group included Marvin, Kevin, Osborne, Patricia, Tia, and Trisha. As the group was walking, they were approached by two Hispanic men. The Hispanic man yelled at them saying, this is T-Flats. The group of teenagers ignored them and just kept walking. Once they arrived to the foster home, they was told to come back later. So they walked up the street and they were then approached by the two Hispanic men again. Marvin seen them pull out straps and Marvin yelled out, they gonna shoot, run. Marvin was shot in the leg and Trishel in the chest. She lost her life. Several Hispanics were on the street at the time and gathered descriptions of the shooters. One woman even said she knew the shooter's name. His name was Milo. Police went to Milo's home where his parents gave consent for the police to look inside his room. They found several writings of him put in NK and also distant African Americans. The second shooter was later identified as a man named Christian. The police also searched in his house and they found basically the same thing in his room. Him also writing NK and also distant black people. Both Christian and Milo left so many witnesses over 10 people identified them as the shooters. Christian and Milo both received several light sentences. April 16th, 2009. Taylor, L, and Steve were walking to a broad named Quisha's house around 2 p.m. Sounds like a train to me, but anyway, they were from Treetop Piru. When they reached Elm Street and Acacia Avenue, they seen a car full of Mexicans, and they were from their rivals, the T Flats. The T Flats were mugging and pressing them hard, even throwing up T Flats out the window. It was Eric, Ed, and Hammer that was inside the T Flats car. L told Steve, let's just run. The car yelled out T Flats, and then the shooting occurred. But the T-Flex wasn't the one to up the score. It was Tyler. 
Treetops ran and all ended up at Quisha's house. Tyler told L and Steve to go back to get his strap because he stashed it. On the way back to get it, Steve and L got jammed up by the police. The police accused them of doing the shooting. Ed from T-Flat started telling. He told the police that the treetop shot at him and nobody in the car the T-Flats did anything. He said the only reason why they stopped by the treetop power rules is because their car messed up. Several witnesses who watched from the seat said they seen three African Americans tagging T-Flats wall and then the T-Flats happened to pull up and catch them. One of the African Americans began firing at the T-Flats is what witnesses said. Tyler was later arrested. He told the police it was self-defense. Tyler said just weeks prior, the T-Flats chased after him, including Hammer. He said and they also was yelling this is to African Americans. Several witnesses say this wasn't true. They would say Tyler was their aggressor. Tyler ended up getting manslaughter and was sentenced to 10 years. September 10th, 2012. In the late evening, Jose, Robert, and a few other people were chilling outside their house on Magnolia Street. A man then popped out and started airing out the crowd. Several men were shot, including Robert. Jose gave a description of the shooter to the police. The shooter ended up being a man named Rob from Fruittown, Peru. He shot at them because he believed they were from T-Flats. The house had cameras on it, and it caught Rob doing the shooting. Rob was pinned to this shooting and several others. Rob ended up receiving 133 years to life. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.